Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.47 and I quickly wanted to touch on the elusive self-oscillating filter. Now this is something that you might have to do a little additional research on to fully understand, but in some old and classic analog synthesizers there was this little feature that you weren't really supposed to know about but that somebody eventually tapped in on where if you crank the resonance or the Q control way, way, way up, you actually would produce a tone, okay? And that tone would end up being a sine wave and it would be like the most pure sine wave you could actually come up with. Now in the digital domain, in order to allow for self oscillation to occur, they actually have to write it into the code because with real analog filters, they require actual amplifiers in order to either tune up or to turn up or turn down a particular range of frequencies. And the resonance control is really like a feedback loop. So with the resonance, we uh, feed the output of the filter frequency back into itself based on how high this resonance control is set. And it can get to a point, just like when we have feedback that gets out of control, when we run feedback into feedback into feedback, we create this feedback loop. And if this would be set too high, the, um, the filter itself would be set into self-oscillation and would therefore create a standing wave or an audible wave. Okay, so with the polysynth, I'm going to uh, explain a couple of things. With this built-in filter, it doesn't allow for self-oscillating. And let me turn key tracking on as well. So if I play this back and we take a quick listen here. Sorry, caps lock needs to be on. All right, our sound is like so. Now as I crank up the resonance, What we're doing is we're just adding extra emphasis around the 415 hertz mark. So there's not that much happening there. So let's maybe turn this more into a sine wave. Or excuse me, a saw wave. And now let's turn up the resonance, see if we get a little more of an effect. We're definitely getting an effect, but we're not adding any new harmonics. We're just getting this one particular harmonic to really be super resonant. And as you play up and down the keyboard, sometimes you'll hit on some of these spots and sometimes you won't. So that's one that's super resonant. But if I play here, we're not really hyping anything too much. Okay, in resonance, you typically turn up a little bit because it emphasizes that filter movement uh, when you're actually moving this around for that very reason, because you'll hit on some resonant peaks in the frequency spectrum, and it really adds to the motion. But if I turn resonance all the way up, we're not actually getting any self-oscillation to occur. The only way to impart some self-oscillation, if you will, is to use our ladder filter. Okay, because our ladder filter is analog modeled and it's probably modeled after the Minimoog's um, self-oscillating filter. So what we'll do here is we'll play a note. That's good, I'm gonna pull the frequency down. And I've already compensated for what's about to happen and I've turned the gain down quite a bit on this filter. And now let's hear what happens when I turn the resonance up. It's starting to get hot. Whoa, there it is. So if I turn this all the way up 100%, I'm no longer even clicking or holding down any notes. We're just self-oscillating with this filter. And then if I added an additional filter here, we would be able to generate out a perfect sine wave. And then I can move this frequency around. So again, I am not touching anything, just the frequency control. So if we were to modulate this, we can kind of get a cool whistling effect. So the 
this would be a fun time to maybe add on an LFO. Turn it to uh, sample and hold mode. Boop. Now that was bizarre. And uh, get to modulating. All right, so that's just something I wanted to show you guys. It's like a classic analog trick, but the issue is, you know, the only way to actually evoke this is to put a ladder filter in here as opposed to using the default filter. So another difference between um, the digital filter and the analog modeled one. Thought that would be kind of a cool trick, and you can actually experiment around with that and see what you come up with. Thanks a lot, and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.